Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the AI headlines you need in around five minutes. I was at an AI dinner last night featuring investors, some big enterprises, and a number of different startup entrepreneurs. And one of the big points of discussion was just how dominant NVIDIA really is. Now, part of the conversation is, of course, how they are the company that has made the most money out of the whole AI revolution so far. But another part of this was how they are quietly moving across the entire stack. In other words, they are not content to just be the chips underneath everything. They are working on basically all the other pieces of AI as well. Lending credence to that conversation, NVIDIA quietly released a new open source model that seems to be blowing away the benchmarks. Called the Llama 3.1 Nemotron 70B Instruct, the model was uploaded to Hugging Face without fanfare on Tuesday. The model apparently performs better across major benchmarks than OpenAI's GPT-40 and Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet. As you can probably tell from the name, the model is a refinement of Meta's open source Llama 3.1 model. The training featured RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback, and overall VentureBeat writes, NVIDIA's latest model release signals just how fast the AI landscape is shifting. While the long-term impact of Llama 3.1 Nemotron 70B Instruct remains uncertain, its release marks a clear inflection point in the competition to build the most advanced AI systems. These recent releases, particularly the open source NVLM project, have shown that NVIDIA's AI ambitions go beyond just competing. They are challenging the dominance of proprietary systems like GPT-40 in areas ranging from image interpretation to solving complex problems. Now, as the model has only been out for a couple of days, people are still in the early stages of figuring out what it can do. Still, as VentureBeat points out, the model correctly answered the question how many R's are in strawberry with a detailed and accurate response, which is a classic challenge for LLMs. Now, not everyone is convinced. Ex-user Sentex reran the benchmarks and commented that it wasn't quite as good as claimed. But still, this brings up really interesting questions about the commoditization of models. Will companies and individuals always be willing to pay for the state of the art? Or will we reach a point where cheap but good enough models are frankly good enough? Speaking of competition in areas other than the state of the art, Mistral has released a new set of models that are optimized for laptops and phones. They are calling it Le Ministrao and released two models, 3B and 8B, both of which have a context window of 128,000 tokens and which they write were, quote, built to provide a compute-efficient and low-latency solution for local privacy-first inference for critical applications such as on-device translation, internetless smart assistants, local analytics, and autonomous robotics. Ultimately, there's nothing huge here other than a reinforcement of the larger trend line, which is that even as competition at the state-of-the-art increases, so too does competition for these smaller, cheaper models as well. Moving over into the world of energy, which, by the way, will also be the subject of our main episode, Little-known data center startup Crusoe Energy has formed a $3.4 billion joint venture with Blue Owl Capital to build a 200-megawatt data center in Abilene, Texas. Once complete, the facility will house one of the largest supercomputers in the world. The press release was a little coy, stating the project is 100% long-term, leased to a Fortune 100 hyperscale tenant, with occupancy expected to begin in the first half of 2025. The design will be optimized for direct-to-chip liquid cooling and will also accommodate air cooling. At completion, the data center will be able to operate up to 100,000 GPUs on a single integrated network fabric, quote, advancing the frontier of data center design and scale for AI training and inference workloads. That description could only fit the new data center being built by Oracle for use by OpenAI, which is exactly what the information reported. For some, the curious part of the story is why a project so big would choose a relatively obscure company to design and build it. Crusoe Energy began as a specialist in building Bitcoin mining facilities. There are a number of big differences, but one of the things Crusoe became known for was cutting-edge cooling systems. It sounds as though this new AI cluster will leverage a number of different experimental features, so perhaps Crusoe is the only company with the technical chops to pull it off. It also sounds as though the project will be highly unconventional in a number of other ways. The deadline is extremely tight, with OpenAI wanting to fire up the GPUs by early next year. Crusoe described this as a, quote, record-setting construction timeline. The press release added, the notional power plan for the site includes both on- and off-site renewable resources, including surrounding wind developments, and a potential future large-scale on-site solar installation. The goal is to optimize existing renewable power resources and incentivize new greenfield renewable power development. It sounds, then, as though the facility will tap into local renewable energy projects that have been constructed but are not yet connected to the grid. This was another specialty of Crusoe in the Bitcoin mining space. The firm had its origins in deploying shipping containers filled with miners adjacent to oil wells, capturing methane waste to power their generators. For all the discussion in the Web3 world of the intersection of AI and Web3, so far it seems like the biggest overlap is taking advantage of the data center expertise of the mining adjacent companies to take on projects that no one else would be crazy enough to take on. One more today, photonic computing startup Lightmatter has raised $400 million to solve one of the biggest bottlenecks in next generation data centers. 
Their product is a high bandwidth switch that uses light waves rather than wires to pass communications between GPUs in a training cluster. Theoretically, this could be a much faster way to connect the units together. Currently, the top end data centers use 100,000 GPUs, but they all need to be connected together, allowing them to function somewhat like a single machine. This scale is already banging up against the limits of current technology, and performance issues are going to start to hinder further advances. Light Matter CEO Nick Harris said, Hyperscalers know that if they want a computer with a million nodes, they can't go do it with Cisco traditional switches. Once you leave the rack, you go from high density interconnect to basically a cup on a string. Now, the current state of the art is NVIDIA's NVL72 platform, which wires together 72 Blackwell units in a single rack. The issue comes from the connections between racks. Harris added, For a million GPUs, you need multiple layers of switches, and that adds a huge latency burden. You have to go from electrical to optical to electrical to optical. The amount of power you use and the amount of time you wait is huge, and it gets dramatically worse in bigger clusters. Harris is convinced his company can deliver, and it seems like that conviction is hard won. He said finally, Photonics is coming way faster than people thought. People have been struggling to get it working for years, but we're there. After seven years of absolutely murderous grind. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode.